What's going on, 5.9 Gaming crew? Letho and up here, you guys. Welcome back to another weekly wrap episode. Guys, before we begin, do me a favor. We just put out a video. It's a comparison of the PS4 and PC versions of God of War. Do me a favor, go ahead and check out that video. A lot of work I put into it, and it's a really, really good video. It really helps us out. If you guys go ahead and make sure you check that one out. Uh, before we begin with the weekly wrap, as you guys know, this is a series where we go ahead and we talk about the gaming news of the past week. Um, I got five pieces of news to go over, a mixture of some Pokemon, some Nintendo, some PlayStation. Uh, that's pretty much the, a good mix up for what it is. And then before we begin with the first piece of news, let's talk about some quick game sales that I saw this past week. First off, Super Mario Maker for Switch, or Super Mario Maker 2 for Switch. This was $41.99 on the Nintendo eShop, go check that out. It takes two, again, if you haven't already, go check that out as well. Uh, from what I've seen, PS4 and PS5 currently have it on PSN. For $19.99 and a Resident Evil Village for PC and Steam with Humble is on sale right now for $29.99. Another great game. All right, let's go ahead now and jump into story number one, and that is Pokemon Legends RCS got an extended gameplay trailer. So we got some details from that trailer. I gotta say, it's just sold me on it. Make sure you guys tune into this week's upcoming podcast episode because we did talk about it a little bit, and uh, it's the, after this trailer, it solidified the fact that I am just completely excited for this game. And I don't care what anybody says. They think it's mid. They think it's trash because the graphics are not good. All that aside, I think it's going to be a great game. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the details that were brand new from this trailer. Uh, one of the first ones that we got to know was that uh, some Pokemon you'll counter like beat off won't attack the player while some like Shinx will. So that's a good little mix up there. Uh, Agile and Strong Style. We saw it before, but now we got some actual details about it. So basically the way it works is Pokemon can use an Agile style or Strong Style version of their attack move. Agile style sacrifices some power, but will allow your monster to move again more quickly, while Strong Style takes longer to unleash, but it's a more powerful version of your move. We also learn about Alpha and Noble Pokemon. Essentially, Alphas have uh, glowing red eyes and they're gonna be more aggressive and powerful than your regular Pokemon. Whereas Nobles are pretty much kind of like little like mini boss fights, essentially. Um, they're more of these Pokemon in a more frenzied state. And to take them down, the way the gameplay or was showing it was that as a trainer, you get this special item that's, I think it was like known as like a bomb. And you use these bombs to kind of take down this big life bar. And as you're taking down the life bar, you get moments where you can summon out your Pokemon and to help take down even more of the life bar. And I think you kind of just go back and forth there. Uh, the game, it was kind of interesting there because uh, this is, again, one of the first like brand new game mechanics I've seen in a Pokemon game where you as a trainer are like, you know, taking down some of the life of an actual Pokemon, or at least whatever this frenzied state life bar is. Um, so that looks actually pretty interesting. You know, just definitely got some action, some challenge to it. Whereas all the other Pokemon games, you know, it's just straight up use your Pokemon against someone else's Pokemon. That's just how it goes. So it's definitely kind of different, which is pretty cool. There's going to be a much more uh, bigger crafting system in this game. Uh, they show that you can use your Pokemon to actually gather materials out in the wild, which is pretty cool. And then again, they kind of went back and showed just some additional haircuts you can get, um, you know, also additional look for your character. And for the most part, that was kind of some of the quick things that you would seen from this new gameplay trailer. Again, it just looks, I think it looks really good. I'm really excited. Um, I had to remind everybody, you know, this is Game Freaks, if I'm not mistaken, this is Game Freaks, like big, biggest game I think that they've ever done. So kind of keep that with what you can. You know, you've seen the past games that Game Freak has done. People are expecting, I don't know, they're expecting some type of crazy open world uh, experience, some 4K, you know, HDR images and whatnot, some crazy textures. But if you look in the past, this is something that's really brand new for Game Freak. And so keep that in mind as always. I think this is going to be a really big, uh, really big uh, move for Pokemon. Uh, hoping that this is, that this sells well, because I really do think, I think a lot of people are excited that like Pokemon has gone into this more open world-esque, you know, kind of uh, style here. So I, I really want to see them continue with this, make this the foundation so that the future titles can just build off of this, right? Especially when we talk about getting into like, the next new Switch, new powerful console, keeping this same foundation, right? And just building upon it with the power of a new Switch. You'll finally hit those textured grass, right? Those textured mountains that people want to see. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. Let me know down below. Are you excited for Pokemon Legends Arceus? I think it's going to be such an awesome game. Let's go into uh, story number two, and that is we also got a brand new trailer for Kirby and the Forgotten Land, along with the release date, finally. Now, this is from Wesley LeBlanc over at Game, Inst Game Informer. And just real quickly, uh, for the first story, a lot of that information I got from myself from the actual YouTube channel, uh, from the Pokemon YouTube channel. 
uh back to store number two here uh, essentially Kirby the Forgotten Land got an official release date of March 25th uh, some of the new game world game details are that they're gonna have they're basically calling it 3d stages but these 3d stages they kind of look like they're like just mini open world they might want to say more of like an open zone kind of like a monster hunter kind of situation so they're much more expansive in the actual stages themselves um, confirmed abilities that we know are coming are like a mage ability, tornado, hammer, sword, and they just show off some brand new abilities, uh, the Dro and the Ranger. Uh, we saw Mennonite return, which is pretty cool. And they're gonna they also confirmed that co-op multiplayer will be happening. Uh, another person could take another Joy-Con and play as Bandana Waddle D. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Th to be honest, this was the first Kirby game that I think got my attention since I was probably a kid and playing back on like the Game Boy days, just some of the old classic Kirby. I've skipped like generations of Kirby because I think this is the first one that actually caught my attention. And I think it's because they did a great job of like, you know, the actual environments and the worlds. They look really good. And this is another one of those like, you know, games that are like so similar to like Mario Odyssey where I'm like, you're really showing off the power of what the Switch can do. And so this is a game where I'm really excited to see, um, you know, I'm really excited to see how it turns out, but I really want to play it myself. So March 25th, mark that under calendars as Kirby and the Forgotten Land. That is the official release date for the game. Jumping into story number three is a little bit interesting, one that I'm personally really excited for, or at least hoping it leads into something that I'm really excited for. And that is Sony orders UK and US retailers to take down PlayStation Now cards. We're getting this from VentureBeat by Jeff Grubb. So by January 21st, UK retailers are to take down PlayStation Now cards from their shelves as directed by Sony. Now, US and Canada apparently began doing this like last week, and I've never noticed it. I'm kind of curious to go out to a store today and be like, okay, is there any PlayStation Now cards? Because that would be obviously, a, a, that would be truth to the story. Keep in mind, uh, the reason why this is kind of generating some hype is that reminded that Bloomberg released an official story a couple months ago talking about an upcoming new PlayStation tier subscription service. It was codenamed Project Spartacus. It was a three tier subscription service that was merging PlayStation Plus with PlayStation Now. So essentially, if you're seeing, you know, uh, retailers having to take down PlayStation Now cards because they don't want them no longer for sale, something's got to be going on with PlayStation Now. And it kind of goes back to that story. And so when you kind of look back at it, you're, it's, it's an easy way to look back and say, oh snap, this is probably meaning that they have something brand new planned for PlayStation Now, whether that gets merged right into PlayStation Plus underneath this Project Spartacus thing that's popping off. Um, if not, maybe they're getting rid of it, who knows? But there's a very, very good chance that this is gonna finally be the introduction into Project Spartacus, whatever this new subscription service is gonna be for PlayStation. I'm really excited. Um, if you guys don't remember, essentially uh, that Project Spartacus, three tiers, the first basic tier uh, was basically just your same thing that you all, a lot of us do right now. It's just having PlayStation Plus, right? That's pretty much the first tier. Second tier incorporates PlayStation Now into PlayStation Plus, but only for PS4 backwards compatibility. Whereas the third tier, the most premium tier, is essentially getting uh, backwards compatibility with obviously PlayStation Now. Um, again, merged with PlayStation Plus uh, with PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, PlayStation and then you're getting also PSP. And that's a, that's adding the PSP was, I think, one of the newer, if not, I'm pretty sure that was the newest thing to add to something like PlayStation Now, because I'm like positive, unless I missed it, I don't think they've ever had PSP before, or at least a big library. But not to mention, right, PlayStation Now didn't have the most expansive library to begin with. So, you know, a lot of this is hoping and praying that, you know, PlayStation is actually going to be going, you know, really hard and really in with, you know, this new subscription service model that they, you know, actually do bring in a lot more games, right, from past consoles, right, for PS3, P PS2, PS1, especially PSP. So uh, it'd be really interesting to see what they end up doing. Give me your thoughts about this. I mean, you know, are you excited if they do bring up, you know, their own Game Pass competitor? Because that's kind of what this basically is, right? This is PlayStation's take at their own sort of Game Pass. So give me your thoughts about it. Are you excited about it? I'll tell you right now, I'm really excited about it. I've been dying for them to merge PlayStation Plus for PlayStation Now charge an extra five or ten bucks for me personally that's a good enough reason to go ahead and just kind of get the service or at least sign up for maybe the first tier or not the first tier, but the second tier um i would probably go with the most premium one when we see more of the benefits we see more of the games if they start adding in more games than they did before playstation now that'll easily sell me because obviously you look at game pass and they're going a lot of games like what over 100 plus games all the way back to like xbox so you know obviously they know what they're doing so i really hope playstation you know takes a couple notes and is able to really sell this new project spartacus so give me your thoughts down below i want to hear about it 
we can go ahead now and jump into story number four and that is twisted metal reboot gets a brand new studio to work on the game this is an updated story by vgc from andy robinson so vgc reported or earlier that this week the destruction all-star studio lucid had ceased development on a reboot of the classic car combat series aka twisted metal it is now understood that the uk based fire sprite game studio uh, which was acquired by sony last year if you don't remember is going to be the developer that takes over the twisted metal project now fire sprite as we currently know has multiple project in works that they announced uh, more the one that's the most recent one that we just got announced was the new horizon call of the mountains for the playstation vr2 Fire Sprite has a good history with VR games, and so that made sense. But they also had, you know, kind of teased that, like, hey, we're also working on our own project. We got actually a couple of projects in line here. So uh, this would be one of the prop. This would probably be one of the biggest projects that they're going to be working on. Uh, there's a lot of other talks saying that um, if you guys remember the game MotorStorm, which was a pretty big game back on PS3, uh, one of the head developers on that project is going to be working on this project with Fire, Fire Sprite. Uh, now, MotorStorm was actually a really cool game. I think I, I really enjoyed that game. It was like one of the launch titles, I think, for PS3. I remember he made use of the controller of, of like the vibration and stuff like that. It was really cool. So um, I'm I'm pretty excited about this story. If you guys, if you ever played Destruction All-Stars, we played it over here on Five Nine Gaming. It was like me, Platinum Chin, Hazing. A bunch of us played it um, when it first dropped. And it was like an okay game. I think there's a lot of stuff that we didn't like about it. Uh, there was just some decisions with some of like the gameplay, some of the car stuff, right? Uh, I felt like it needed to have a little bit more to it. The game modes were like lacking. Uh, you know, I think there was a lot of reasons why we just didn't really get into it. So that studio that had worked on that game kind of being dropped from it. I kind of am a little bit more excited to see another studio take it on. But it would have been cool. I think I said before on Twitter, I was like, it would have been cool to see that same studio that worked in Destruction All Stars kind of get a little bit of like a get a little bit of a, like a redemption kind of right. Uh, see what they did with Destruction All Stars and make it better for this new Twisted Metal. But either way, I'm excited. This gives Lucid then uh, you know the go to make something else and maybe work on a different title. So give us, uh, I guess, give me your thoughts about that. Let me know down below. Does that get you excited? Also, keep in mind that Sony is working on a live action TV series starring Anthony Mackie for Twisted Metal as well. And if you kind of put it together, right, they're also doing um, the Uncharted with John Uncharted movie. We're getting the the Legacy Edition or the the Special Edition that's coming out that has all the games remastered. That's happening. Same thing with Last of Us, right? We know we're getting the HBO series that's happening, and so there's rumors of an HBO remake. And so you know, Twisted Metal kind of getting the same treatment here. You can kind of see a pattern and a trend of a, with what PlayStation's kind of doing. So I, I, again, it makes sense why they really want to take this Twisted Metal series like you know really serious, and they want to they want to reboot it and bring it back again. I think to make sure it goes hand in hand kind of with that live action series. Um, but give me your thoughts down below jumping to story number five and the final story here and that is new nintendo game trials title is officially live and in fact it went live as of i think it was the 13th so it's been live for a couple days now so make sure if you really want to get this title you jump on it right away especially this weekend um this is from of course an uh, official nintendo twitter account basically the official tweet reads this Prepare to dodge dangers in Captain Toe Treasure Tracker. Available available for Nintendo Switch online members to try from 113, like I said, to 120. Uh, the title is available to purchase on Nintendo eShop at a discounted rate of 30% uh, off until 116. Um, I think this is a pretty cool game that they're um, offering. I feel like the titles that they've been offering for their game trial series are progressively getting better. I still think the biggest one that they did was when they dropped uh, The World Ends With You. I thought that was a really great idea definitely one of those games that were a little bit like tough to kind of fit in for that week right uh to get that done in time because if you want to beat it to kind of take use of the game trial uh for that week uh week long trial whatever you really had to play that game uh again captain toad i think it's a great game a lot of people love that game so that's pretty cool my only thing is and i can and i'll continue to say this i just hate the fact that these are game trials for a week they want to call it game trials they should just make it for a month i don't care what anybody says you might as well do just do that right like make that your version of like how playstation plus gives their free games right how game pass gets their games or not even game pass but like the xbox live gold you know they still give their like you know four four or five games so i just wish for the month nintendo would just change that from like a week week long trial to what, at least a month long trial they're gonna take the game regardless away it just makes the most sense i don't know either way that's what nintendo is doing keep in mind nintendo does still have a game coming to their Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack uh, for the Nintendo 64. It is Banjo Kazooie. I'm really excited. That still doesn't have a release date, but it's supposed to be dropping in January. So just keep that in mind. Now, real quickly, 
uh before we end here games that released this past week we had monster hunter rise dropped on pc that was on january 12th we have splunky 2 on the series x and s xbox one that was january 12th astroneer on switch and the big one god of war on pc so definitely go ahead and check those out those all drop january 12th january 13th and january 14th uh, and again, I want to remind everybody to go check out our podcast episodes. We're having a lot of fun making them. Uh, we still need a title. So make sure you guys draw some suggestions in the actual podcast episode. Uh, give us your suggestion for some titles because we're still waiting for that. And uh, make sure, again, you do check out that awesome PS4 to PC analysis screen uh, for God of War. It was a really well done video. But all right, that's all I got. Thank you guys for watching. As always, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. If you're brand new, you enjoy the content, maybe give the video a like as well. That always helps out. Again, I am Lethal 1UP. Thank you guys for watching, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.